Hey guys, welcome to the video today. Uh, we're going to go over verifying trig identities. So we've been working with simplifying trig identities and now we're going to look at proof. Uh, the good thing is that these aren't really too much more difficult than the ones that we've already looked at. The strategies are the same and really the work is the same only this time we're given what our answer is going to be. So it should help us a little bit but a lot of times students struggle with it because um, you know it's a proof it's verified they get a little bit more complicated because by now you should be getting into the rhythm of what strategies to use how to use that algebra and so these get a, a little bit more complicated and take a little bit longer work but the good news is that you have the answer so much like a road map you kinda know where you're gonna go it's just getting there that is the trick so by the end of this video, uh, the objective is that you should be able to use and verify trig identities using the basic identities that we've already gone over. So let's take a look. I'm going to do three examples and have three practice problems for you. So let's take a look at the first example. Um, we'll verify that the cotangent theta, cosecant theta, tangent squared theta is equal to secant theta. So there are two methods for doing these proofs. One method is to start from one side of the equation and work your way and show that it's equal to the other side. Another method is to use both sides and show that both sides are equivalent to something like 1 equals 1 or secant equals secant. Um, I choose to do the first strategy, the first approach, just because it gives you a, a bit of a stronger base, it gives you a bit of a stronger fundamentals, um, it works your, your brain a little bit more, some of you don't like to do that, I know, but um, it shows that you really understand the algebra and the, uh, the proof approach. So we're gonna, I'm gonna stick with that method. If you want, you can, you can find another method, the other method online, maybe I'll post something up, but for this video we're gonna stick with that method. So we're gonna start with one side. Usually you start with the most complicated side, that way you can simplify it to the least complicated side. So this obviously here is the more complicated side. So I'm going to start with this side and show that it's equal to secant theta. So we're going to write cotangent theta times cosecant theta times tangent squared theta. And we're going to start with this, so then we're going to simplify that. This looks a little light. Let me use a darker color here. So cotangent is cosine over sine, oops, times, cosecant is 1 over sine, and tangent is sine squared over cosine squared. So notice here we're going to have uh, this cosine is going to cancel with one of these cosines. These two sines are going to multiply together so let's, let's do that. We're going to have sine squared over sine times sine is sine squared times cosine, because we already got rid of one of these cosines. And notice the sine squares give us, give us 1 over cosine theta. And 1 over cosine theta is secant theta. All right, so we've shown that this side is equal to secant theta, and we can either put a check mark. I use QED which stands for, let's see if I can remember this, uh, quad, um, quad, er, I forgot what the E is, it's, it's Latin, um, demonstratum, quad era de demonstratum, which means um, that which was to be demonstrated, and we use it a lot in mathematics to show that we've finished a proof. So um, QED, um, you, can, you can just type in QED and Google it, and it'll tell you what, what it is. In fact, hey, you know what? I have it right here. QED. Um, quad erat demonstratum, which is that which had to be demonstrated. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, go back to our slide here. We'll do example two now. Okay, so example two. Uh, this one has two complicated sides, but I'm going to go with the square side. It looks like I can solve it a little bit easier here. So let's start with 1 plus sine sine theta squared over cosine squared. And uh, you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to just separate this to 1 plus sine theta 
times 1 plus sine theta over cosine squared. And I, I want to be honest with you here. When I, when I was working this problem out before the video, I actually, my first tendency was to multiply 1 plus sine and 1 plus sine and, uh, and get a binomial here, 1 plus 2 sine theta plus sine squared theta. And then it, and then it kind of dawned on me that um, I really didn't need to do that because I know that cosine squared theta is, is going to be 1 minus sine squared theta, and so I kind of thought ahead. So a lot of these verify problems, if you kind of think ahead on what you need to get, that I want 1 plus sine, I want one of these to stay up here. So multiplying out isn't really going to help me towards the end. I want to have one of them to cancel out. So I have to think ahead. What am I going to need to do to get there? And, and that's the trick with these is kind of think ahead just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to change 1 minus cosine, or I'm sorry, I'm going to change cosine squared to 1 minus sine squared. And, and this is going to be... Uh, it's going to be beautiful. You're going to see it, and you're going to say, wow, that, that's pretty tricky. And then you're going to come up with something like this on your own. So 1 minus sine squared. 1 minus sine squared is actually a difference of two squares. Um, if you remember your difference of two squares, I'll, I'll just put it up here. This is like 1 minus x squared, which is 1 minus x times 1 plus x. Okay, So it's a difference of two squares. So I'm going to write that down, 1 minus sine theta times 1 plus sine theta. Well, notice here, there you go. We got that top to cancel out. So we got 1 plus sine theta over 1 minus sine theta. So we write QED and done. All right, so there you go. So again, it really, really helps if you know where you're going. It's kind of what I've, I've told some of my students in the past. It's kind of like a, like a maze. Um, I know that sometimes when I do a maze, I'll go around looking at the maze and I'll go, oh man, where am I going to go? Let me look at the end and kind of work my way back a little bit. So knowing kind of what you are ending up with is going to help you figure out where you need to go and what steps you need to take so you don't take the wrong path and spend a lot of time uh, doing something else. But you know, if you do and you think, well, I, you know, I can't do it that way, I got to go back, it's okay to make some errors and go back and fix it. Um, just don't make stuff up, because I've seen students do that too. They'll start to do so, and then they'll just make some trig stuff up, and then all of a sudden they get the right answer, which obviously isn't the right way. So we're looking at, at method here, right? Let's take a look at the next one. And this is my last one, guys, and then, uh, and then I got some practice problems for you. So uh, 1 plus secant theta over tangent theta plus, obviously this is the, the more complicated side, so let's go ahead and work on that side here. Now, sometimes they get, they get a little bit more complicated here. So we're going to need to do, um, just a little back because I have some room to write. I think that for this one, we're going to want to move things into sines and cosines because that was one of the tricks for simplifying. One of the strategies, we'll do the same thing for verifying. So let's change this to 1 over cosine. And I want to preface this with, um, you know, there are a lot of different ways to do this. And if you find a quicker, a quicker method than what I use here, by all means do, as long as it's correct, okay? Um, okay, so what we're going to do here, and uh, you could either do, you can either find a common denominator for both of these, or if you see a fraction within a fraction, what I like to do sometimes is I like to multiply the entire top by this denominator, which was cosine theta, and the entire bottom by this denominator, which is cosine theta. Essentially, what I'm doing is when I'm multiplying the top and the bottom by cosine, I'm really just multiplying the whole thing by 1, right? Cosine over cosine is 1. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to multiply, and it's going to distribute. Okay, so I've got to distribute. I've got to multiply this cosine by both of them. So that's going to end up with, let's see, cosine times 1 is cosine. Uh, cosine times 1 over cosine, well, that cancels out. It's going to be 1, so plus 1. And then cosine times sine over cosine, well, the cosines are going to cancel out here and leave me with sine. And then here I'm going to have sine cosine. That's interesting. Oh, this looks very promising because I've got a sine and a sine here, which we can factor that out, right? 
So I'm going to have cosine theta plus 1 over sine theta times 1 plus cosine theta. And yeah, that looks this this looks exactly the same as I mean it's reversed, but it's plus, so we can we can switch them around. Boom, boom. And we get 1 over sine theta. And voila. 1 over oops. <laughs> Spoke too soon here. 1 over sine theta is cosecant theta. We're done. Q E D. Sometimes people just look for check. Okay, we're done. We verified it. So uh, that's verifying, guys. Again, you want to make sure that you kind of see where you're going, what you think you're going to end up with. Use the same strategies that we covered with simplifying. And start from the more complicated side. Simplify it till you get to the least complicated side. Those are the tricks, um, the strategies you want to use for verifying trig trigonometric identities. Here are some practice problems for you. Take a look at this, pause it, go, and uh, on the WISC link, there are the solutions to these. So, thanks for joining me. Bye-bye. As soon as I figure out how to stop this thing. <laughs>